Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D here, man. Listen, I'm on Show Road in Brooklyn. I'm walking and talking with Jesus. And it's a beautiful day. Look at the water, man. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. This is my spot where I come along with the Lord. I go to the garden of prayer. It's a beautiful morning. And it is beautiful. This is the day that the Lord has made. I want to read to you a short scripture story from the book of Acts chapter 3. And I'm going to go through it just to explain some things. I'm sure you're familiar with this story. Listen to me. I want to encourage you and bless you in the Lord. Chapter 3 verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple, the hour of prayer, time of prayer, in the afternoon. <laughs> They're going there to pray. Now a man who was slain or crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. They put him right there every day, carried him to beg. And then listen to this. When he saw Peter, and John about to enter. Now there were a lot of people walking in and out. But he saw Peter and John. That was God's divine design. Perfect timing. God's order of timing. God has a perfect timing. God's going to bring people into your life. That are going to deposit into your life. That are going to bless your life at the right time. God's divine order or divine design for you to meet someone or some people that are going to bless you. Bless your business, bless your ministry, bless your life, bless your family, bless your church, bless you. Because God has ordered it. So he saw Peter and John. He didn't mention other people. He just mentioned Peter and John that he saw. Mm. The writer of the book of Acts, you know, was Luke, right? It says it in the beginning. Luke, the same author of the Gospel of Luke, he said he saw Peter and John about to enter. Listen to this. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. He said, look at here, guys. There ain't money you can give me. I'm a lame beggar. I'm here every day. Can you drop something in the bucket? That's what they said. I'm paraphrasing. Peter looked straight at him. I want you to underline that word in your mind. He looked straight at him. And so did John. He looked at him. Then passed him by. He stopped, looked at him. I imagine they said to each other, Peter and John, I see a miracle here. What do you see? Yeah, it's perfect for a miracle. Woo, we going in there to pray? This man's lame. This is perfect for a miracle. How about you? What do you see? When you see people in need. When you see people that are down and out. This whole world. Do you see an opportunity for a miracle? Do you see a prophetic message for God to do a miracle in people's life? Are you praying? Are you asking God to touch people's lives? Because this is the time for a perfect miracle in our world today. Can you say amen, somebody? Now listen. Peter looked straight at him. And so did John. Then Peter said, not only look, but they said, look at us. Look at us. I imagine a man asking for money, but then he turned away. Probably asking some others for money. And Peter and John said, hey, hey, buddy, look at me. Look. And that's what we today should be able to tell the world. The world's looking for answers. The world's looking for answers in philosophy and religion and tradition and all kinds of pleasures. They're looking for answers with this pandemic. Where, who, how, and we have the answer. We who, the church, the body of the living God, the body of Christ, the redeem of the Lord. Those that are born again, watching the blood of the land, sanctify, Holy Ghost filled. We have the answer. The answer is not a thing. The answer is not in a substance. The answer is not in a philosophy. The answer is not even in a religion. It's in the person. Oh my God, I get excited. The person of Jesus of Nazareth. Now Peter and John told his man, look, 
Look at us. Can you tell people, look at me? You want to see Jesus? Look at me. I'm radiant. I'm, I'm expressing the love of God. I'm expressing the word of God. I'm expressing the joy of the Lord. Now, the Bible says in the book of Acts that the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. Can that word become flesh in you? When they see you, can they say, there goes the joy of the Lord. There goes the power of God. There goes the peace of God. There goes the love of God. There goes the unity of God. There goes the harmony of God. There goes the miracle of God. Peter and John said look at me and we shall be able to tell the world look at the church. Look at the way we live. We're praising God. We know a living God. We're not perfect but we've been forgiven and we walk with the king and we walk with joy in spite of what's going on in the world. We walk with peace. We walk with spiritual authority. We walk with power because of the living risen Christ that lives in us. Come on shout praise the Lord. Hey! He told, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. See, God is looking for your attention, my attention. God is speaking to us prophetically. Bible says in the book of Hebrews, God who has sundry times, different times, spoke to the fathers through the prophet. He spoke to us through Christ at the cross. Death, burial, resurrection. He's alive. He's not dead. And he's speaking to the world. You going through a pandemic. You going through some serious medical issues. Uh, look at Jesus. Uh, look at Christ, the living Savior, the risen Christ. He said, look at us. We're going to give you what you need, not what you want. Now look. Man gave them the attention. God's looking for your attention. Expecting to get something from them. My question is, what are you expecting from God? What are you expecting? You're expecting a spouse? A house? Some material things? A miracle? You know what I'm expecting? Or what we all Christians should be expecting? I'm expecting God. I'm expecting God himself. I want God in my life. And once I get that or you get that, everything else will follow. Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be at. I'm expecting God. Not the things of God, but the God of the things. The man was expecting some handouts, some money. They said, silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, I give unto you. That's what they told the man. I don't have what you want, but I do have what you need. Silver and gold, I don't have. Such I have, such as I have, I give unto you. The man is expecting things. They said in the name of Jesus. They told him, walk. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. You see, faith in that name will move the hand of God. Will cause miracles in our lives today. Excuse me. Faith in the name of Jesus. Now you can't just use that name loosely. You have to have an encounter. You have to be filled with the spirit, born again. Jesus, walk. The man could have said one or two things. He could have said, is you guys crazy? I've been like this all my life. Business as usual. And that's what the world says today. They don't want Jesus. They turn away from him. Come on, stop that. They'll take philosophy. They'll take self-development therapy. The, pos the power of positive thinking. They'll take religion. Tradition. 
But when you talk about Jesus, I'm not talking about any other God. I'm not talking with a small G. I'm not talking about philosophy or religion, man trying to find God and they make God into an image. I'm talking about the living God, the one that said, let there be, and it was. Uh, the one that's alive, resurrected. The one that came into our heart. Uh, he lives in my heart. Uh, he lives in my life. Uh, I walk with him. I talk with him. Uh, he smiles at me. He restored me. He healed me. He delivered me. He loves me. He embraces me. The living Christ. Uh, in that name, walk. Like I said, the man gonna say, man, come on, stop. You, you kidding me? Or he could have done what he did. He said, okay, and he got up. He's crippled, begging. When they said in the name of Jesus, get up. Bible says he started leaping, hey, and jumping, and praising God, hey, ha! See, some of y'all may not understand that. You don't have to get that excited. If you were crippled, lame from birth, you were sick in a hospital, or in a prison cell, or hooked on drugs, and Jesus set you free. Yeah, you be leaping, jumping, and praising God. Ha! Hey! Because of the miracle that he's done for you. I know 42 years ago when he delivered me and saved me and restored me, I'm still leaping. I'm still praising God. I'm still shouting the praises of God because you're grateful for what God has done. Come on, shout praise the Lord. The man started leaping, jumping. Praising God. You know what I believe? Two things. One, this man was lame, crippled all his life. That means he had no strength in his muscles, his legs muscles. His legs were lame. Joints, no strength. But it said in the name of Jesus, whoop, he restored everything. Put back strength in those muscles in the legs. God will restore to you what you've lost. <laughs> Whatever it is, by way of family, by way of finances, by way of health, God is a restoring. I'm prophesying now. God will restore to you whatever the devil stole, whatever you lost in sin when you stepped away from God or when you were far from God. Well, God will restore it to you and make you whole and make you sound like he did this man's legs, number one. Number two, not only did he restore everything back to this man, but the man went inside the temple and followed Peter and John. When you get saved, you want to follow Jesus. You want to follow him. Wherever he takes you, you're willing to go and testify of the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says when they saw this man walking into the temple, leaping, jumping, and praising God, the people were amazed and said, isn't that the guy out there begging? Look at him. They were amazed at the miracle that God has done. God will amaze the world through you because of the miracle that God has done in your life. So in the name of Jesus, I speak prophetically to you. Get up! Walk! Move away from that that has you lame, crippled, God will restore, give you life, not death. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for this message to go across and touch people's lives. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring salvation into our hearts. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. Woo! Hey! <laughs> God bless you, man. Mm, 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 mm.